What's up, Navigating Academia family? This is Dr. J. Phoenix Singh coming at you to be able to give you my take on the top five green flags that graduate school supervisors will see in your application materials if you prepare them properly. Now, this is kind of a part two to what was part one, which I ended up putting out last week, which is my take on the top five biggest red flags, the things that are really kind of like danger Will Robinson, danger Will Robinson signs to graduate school supervisors who you really want to work with. But when they take a look at your application materials, if they see one of those five things, uh oh, you may have some problems. So it is my recommendation that you watch that video after this one if you haven't checked it out already. But like I said, that was about red flags. Today, though, we're talking about green flags, things that basically say, you know what? This person's basically good to go. Let's go ahead. I always, if you guys ever do sessions with me, you can go ahead and book an appointment via the website down below so that I can take a look at your materials, give you straightforward guidance in terms of how to be able to maximize, how to optimize your materials to be able to get into your target graduate program. But something that I always talk about is how the impression that you always want to give to your prospective graduate school supervisor is almost like you're a plane who very simply is going to have a smooth landing when you come in for landing at the airport of their lab. Why? Because at the end of the day, the last thing that they want is somebody who's going to come in where they got to teach them loads of new stuff and there's no perceived goodness of fit and it just seems random that you're applying to them in the program so on and so forth, or that you're just being unrealistic, right? So let's go ahead and talk about what I believe to be the five big green flags. So in this example for this video, I'm going to be the exemplar in terms of imagine that I'm the grad school supervisor who you want to work with, and I'm looking at your materials, okay? So what would the big green flags be? So the first one would be an above median GPA and set of test scores. So for example, let's say you want to get into a clinical psych program here in the U.S., so you would sometimes have to take something called the GRE, Graduate Record Examination. If you want to go to medical school, be the MCAT here. If you want to go to business school, it usually be something like the GMAT. Uh, so, you know, depending on uh, what kind of grad school you want to go to, there's going to be different types of standardized tests. But realistically, provided that you've got a median or above GPA and, in my case, GRE, right, for clinical psych, score, you're good to go. I honestly don't want you worrying anything more about that. Uh, if everything else or whatever is uh, up in the air, somebody's got research experience, somebody's got clinical experience or in-field practical experience, people have different letters of recommendation, so on and so forth. Uh, if you throw all these things into the cauldron of the application world, uh, the things that are going to differentiate people in terms of those who get in and those who, get not get, who don't get in are not test scores and they're not GPAs. Okay, this is something that for undergraduate, especially here in the U.S., a lot of people kind of believe that. It's like, well, I maxed out my SATs, I maxed out my ACTs, and now clearly I'm going to get into my dream program. For grad school, this, this does not hold true, okay? Um, so just if I'm the target supervisor, I'm looking at your application, I'm literally just going to take a look at the GPA, just be like, okay, this is reasonable for our program, and then I'm going to take a look at the GRE, be like, okay, reasonable, they didn't totally screw up on anything. Good to go, right? Now, uh, if you guys work with me, you're also going to know that uh, basically GPA and GR are used to be able to essentially triage you through, right? So if you did really bad on the GRE or if you did really bad on your GPA and there's no explanation of why or there is an explanation that's not compelling, uh, then it's something where you're out. Unless there's some sort of like crazy other thing going on, like you got 50 publications and you're applying for a research doctorate. Uh, or it's something where, you know, you've known and worked in the lab of the target supervisor for the last 10 years, right? And, you know, you're, you're BFFs with them now and, you know, you've, you've really kind of earned your stripes, as they would say. If that's not the case, we're looking for, for ways to be able to get rid of people these days because if we're in getting 100 to 150 applications per target supervisor for these insanely competitive programs that have always been insanely competitive and now we're dealing with less than a 1% acceptance rates at the top programs and you have like a 3-2 GPA or something, this is a problem. Right. And again, green flag, if you've got median or above, how are you going to find out the median or above? Just contact, uh, you know, anybody from that program. Usually there's somebody who's an administrative assistant can get you that information if it's not already located online. 
Every single program is going to have a different set of medians, obviously. If you're stuck with averages and standard deviations, so be it. But if you can get the median data, in my experience, that's really what's going to work best for you, okay? Um, so that's number one. Above median GPA and GRE scores, I'm going to be like, green light, let's go ahead and go on to a more comprehensive review, right? Uh, so the next thing that I would take a look at, right, in terms of the next uh, green, green flag, right, is literally if I end up taking a look at the application and I say, oh, psh, okay, finally, here they are. What do I mean by that? Let's say that your name is Jane Doe, right? And I take a look at your application. I'm just like, oh, Jane. Okay, well, I know Jane. Okay, let's see, Jane, what we got? What would you turn into me, Jane? In other words, obviously, you can even hear it in my voice when I'm taking a look at it, right? It's a sense of familiarity already, right? If you have done your job well and forged a personal connection with the target supervisor at the Masters of the Doctoral level, Obviously, this process is going to go significantly smoother than if it's something where you literally just sent a random email to somebody saying, hey, I love your stuff. I've been reading your work for years and years. I'd love to work with you. I love the work that your lab is doing. No, that's not a personal connection, right? And especially now, like I'm making this video and it's what? It's uh, October 11th. Most grad school applications this year are going to be due within the next two months. Uh, if you're just going to send an email to somebody and this kind of stuff, that's not a personal connection. Should you do it? If that's the only option you got at this stage, absolutely. But if you watch this channel, you know that I recommend that you take a minimum of one year to be able to just go through, and like a minimum, right? For me, I spent three years building personal connections with my doctoral, uh, target doctoral supervisors, and I you know, got into my, my Ivy League programs, I got into my Oxford program, I got into all the top programs I want to get into. Uh, there's a very strategic way to be able to do this. Uh, this is not something to be left to chance. Uh, there are very clear strategies now to be able to do it. Now, if you don't have any of those options right now, you do need to send that kind of an email and just watch the video on the channel about how to approach uh, prospective grad school supervisors, or I think it's called potential grad school supervisors, if you're you know, searching on the channel. Uh, watch that, because that will give you some text for the actual email itself. But um, at this point, you're a little late. Right? And if you're watching this video and you've got at least a year left and that's what you were thinking of doing is sending an email. And by the way, like the number of people who are going to agree to like do a Zoom meeting with you or something, people are so Zoomed out at this stage, the likelihood is like extraordinarily low unless you for some reason have a deep connection with some middle person, right? So for example, maybe your current supervisor or your current lab manager is BFFs with that individual. Okay, then they can set that up for you, okay? Always let them set it up, by the way. Um, but if it's something where it's just, you know, you and you've got no connection to that person other than loving their work and these things, I love that you know who you want to work with, but we need to strategically get this done, right? Again, this is something that anybody who works with me, they know that I've got a really clean, clear system for exactly how to be able to make these personal connections. You've got to do it at least a year in advance. Why? Because the second that, you know, summer rolls around, all of a sudden target grad school supervisors are getting dozens and dozens, and then eventually, in some cases, like 100 plus emails just of people expressing their interest. And I'm sorry to tell you, most people have like a copied and pasted email that they use that says, dear, and then the person's name. So, dear Jay, dear Phoenix, dear, you know, whoever right? You know, just writing it down or whatever, and then literally just paste the rest of it. Thank you so much for expressing your interest. You know, uh, it sounds like you'll be a very interesting candidate to read your work. Da, 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 da. Uh, you know, if it would be at all possible or whatever to learn a little bit more about you, feel free to send your CV, whatever it is. And then you'll end up sending it because you think that it's personal to you. But in actuality, this is just like a stock message that we end up kind of sending. And it gives us an idea of the type of person who's going to be applying for the programs. All right. Um, so, Anyway, this is just something where if it is something that you have really put that time in to the point where the person knows you and they're just like, oh, it's Amy. Excellent. Okay. Amy's application is final. Okay, Amy, talk to me. Right? This is going to give you a leg up immediately. Maybe your, you know, your GPA wasn't 4.0, it was 3.75. But the person actually knows who you are. <laughs> Right. And they've had a conversation with you. You know, you bought them coffee at that conference or, oh, you know, like, uh, you know, you you brought along a copy of, you know, one of their papers to read in the middle of their symposium or something. And you went up to them to talk to them afterwards. Luckily now, you know, it, it'll never be post COVID, but it's something where post uh, large scale lockdown, a lot of times. 
Uh, you know, we're, we're always thinking about when, when's the next in-person conference going to be. So now a lot of conferences, at least here in the United States, they're going to be in person now next year or even some uh, in the winter of this year. Fantastic, because people are going to get back to normal uh, insofar as actually getting the opportunity to network in person. This is the best way to be able to get to know a Target graduate school supervisor, okay? So that's the second uh, green light is, up. Oh, I already know you, right? You've already made that personal connection with me. Okay, number three is going to be, ah, if, if I'm the supervisor, the Target supervisor, and I read your application, I say, God, finally, an engaging personal statement that's got some flow to it. It's actually well-written. It's not just a whole bunch of stuff thrown in there or a whole bunch of random narratives or a whole bunch of, well, I just thought that this was important enough to dedicate a whole paragraph to. No. <laughs> right. I have done this hundreds of times now, guys. Uh, mostly with y'all, which has been amazing. Well, it's been a blessing to be able to help so many of you guys get into your target grad schools. Uh, by helping you with your personal statement, looking at your materials and being able to say, we got to shift these things around. This flow is not strong, but we can make it good, right? And here's the, like literally sentence by sentence, you guys know that I got a structure in terms of how to be able to do it because people are really bad at writing personal statements, right? And usually a lot of people they ask are people at career, you know, career center or, uh, you know, their, you know, family members or friends who've previously gotten in. And these people have a vested interest in just saying or whatever, oh, this is so great, minor tweaks, you're, you're so amazing, you're going to be great. You need somebody who's completely independent to be able to take a look at your stuff and who has no goal other than to be able to actually help you get in, right? Uh, and that's what I do, right? So it's one of these situations where personal statements are some of the weakest things that I see. Uh, I do have videos on this channel where I go over personal statements. Definitely watch those regardless of the type of uh, program you're applying to because it'll give you some general sense of things. But obviously, if you want me to take a look at your material specifically, now's a good time to be able to do that. We need at least a few weeks to be able to like go through together. Insofar as like looking at it one time, giving revision suggestions, you make the changes, let's look at it a final time, and then we'll be good to go, right? Um, but, you know, that takes a while so that you have time to be able to make those changes, okay? Um, so, but it's got to have flow, capital F flow, right? I always talk about the image of pouring water down a set of stairs, right? Every paragraph is a very specific mission in terms of what it needs to accomplish for the reader. Flow through all five paragraphs and you're good to go. You'll be done in a page and a half to two pages. You'll hit whatever word count you need. Sometimes these word counts can be a lot longer. Sometimes you only get a paragraph to be able to say things. It's fine. I've seen like everything under the sun, right? So in terms of how to be able to do it, there's very specific ways. So if you have a personal statement that is engaging, that it's got the right flow, it is not written colloquially, right? But at the same time, it has like a, a nice kind of conversational elegance to it. That's what we're looking for. It makes you stand out so much. Okay. So that is number three. Uh, number four is going to be uh, a CV with, ah, a CV that's well-structured in terms of prioritizing publications, conference presentations, particularly papers, right, uh, conference papers, right, awards and funding, any kind of grants, any kind of external funding that you have received or internal scholarship funding, fine, right, but those things should be front and center. A lot of people want to pad their CV and so they'll have like a skill set section where they'll be like, anytime you see anybody with a skill set section that mentions that they're good with Microsoft Office, no. Okay. If you're just like, you know, one of my skill sets is Microsoft Excel. Yeah, I hope it is. I hope, right? <laughs> Don't put that in there, right? It, it actually makes you look worse. It doesn't make you look better, right? Nobody is just like, ah, you know, what a really killer skill set would be is, uh, you know, Microsoft Access, which doesn't even exist anymore, right? It's just like, that would be great if they know how to be able to use that. It's not helping, right? So again, it's, it's a harsh, honest truth, but you guys know me like I care so much about you guys and I care about you getting in, right? So I'm really straightforward and really blunt about this stuff because I care so much, right? And because in my experience, because it happened to me too, guys, right? Most people are just going to tell you what you want to hear, right? Um, and my goal isn't to tell you what you want to hear, it's to get you in, right? And that's a difference, right? Um, so yes, like I said, prioritizing though. So publications, presentations, awards, and funding, right? If you have in-field experience in your particular field, for example, clinical psych, you know, obviously it'd be great to be able to know about any clinical internships you've had, so on and so forth, 
Um, you know, that is also important to be able to highlight. But things like, you know, your skill sets or the fact that you're bilingual, you know, in Spanish, which is wonderful. I love Spanish, right? Or like I'm bilingual in German, right? Uh, that wouldn't get me into grad school unless I'm going to a German-speaking university, which would be cool. Or if it was something where like whatever my you know, target doctoral project was necessitated my being bilingual in German. Okay, then that would make sense to talk about, but probably not in the CV, probably more in the personal statement or even in one of the letters of recommendation right? Um, so that's what I would say there. So last but not least, the fifth green flag, right, is making it very clear to, in this case, the target supervisor, which I'm pretending to be right now, a strong goodness of fit, not just with the program, but with me, right? So in other words, I need to know by the time that I finish reading your materials that when I say we have a lot in common, you know my research literature, you know my work specifically, you know any funding that I currently have going on, maybe I just got funding from Department of Defense, DOD, here in the United States, right? Big grant, and it's going to fund my work for the next five years. You better know what that work is, right? Because if you're talking about something that I did that was funded by a grant that expired three years ago, I'm not doing that work anymore. So if you say that you're interested in doing that kind of work, and I'm not funded to do it right now, and you're applying to an R1 program, what, what can I say? It suggests that you haven't done your homework on me, right? Same thing in terms of what are your skill sets and what are my skill sets. For example, if you keep talking about how, you know, MATLAB, MATLAB, MATLAB is your, you know, stat package, your stata, 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 and I only use R, and you could just have read any of my recent publications over the last 12 months, take a look in the methods section, take a look under statistical analysis or procedure in APA 7, right? And you could see that. I'm using R, and here are the packages of R that I'm using, and the analytic uh, techniques that I really love, right? Like, I'm a meta-analysis guy, meta-regression, all this kind of stuff, right? Fantastic. If you already know how to do that, that's going to really say something to me, right? It's going to say, literally, that, again, just like you know, a, a flight controller with the little batons, right? Whoop, whoop to be able to get that plane to kind of land smoothly, that is telling me that you have done your homework. You've done your background research and you know a lot about me and you can make a compelling case to me why it is that you're a good fit, right, with my lab. So those are the five big green flags, right? I know this video is a little bit longer than the red flag video, but these are also very important things to be able to to talk about that people usually don't. And I don't just want to focus on the negative in terms of, you know, what are things to watch out for? I also really want to promote the things that will help you get in. So at the end of the day, guys, appreciate y'all watching as always. Um, this forthcoming Saturday, which is coming up, uh, I'm going to be doing my big uh, 10,000 subscriber thank you message. I'm sure that by the time that some of you guys are watching this, it'll be years down the line and hopefully we'll have more than 10,000 subscribers. Uh, but uh, regardless, I appreciate you guys watching so much, and I will talk to you soon. As always, I would love to be able to have sessions with you to be able to help you get into your target program. You can go ahead and book a session down here at uh, www.jphoenixing.com. All right, guys, God bless. Have a great day. Talk to you soon.